Welcome to the Academy for Christian Thought. We have our guest chair in our video series, Professor Max Stackhouse from Princeton Theological Seminary. Uh, Max, tell us about um, Paul Tillich. Well, uh, when I was studying in seminary, uh, I was at Harvard Divinity School. Uh, my grandmother worried greatly about my going there, but uh, my mother encouraged it. Now, why did your grandmother worry? About she thought it was pink. I see. And what does pink mean? It means it's a little tinged with uh, socialism and communism. Ah, uh, you'll be a commie, yeah. Yeah. I see. When, when was that? 1960s? Uh, 58. I see. Okay. That's when I went there. Um, and um, uh, the best teacher there, uh, I had several outstanding teachers there, but the best lecturer, public lecturer, was Paul Tillich. Mm -hmm. uh, and we used to go into his class and had 550 students in a classroom for 250 and sitting in the windows and sitting on the floor and so forth. But he mesmerized us all. And he was uh, developing an idea that uh, the gospel had to be translated into the language of the culture. And he was a genius at dealing with modern culture, with the science and with the uh, existential philosophies and so forth, that talking about it in terms which were current then at the university level. Uh, yeah, I never, uh, later on, I, I, I was benefited from that greatly. And, but later on, when I became a teacher myself, I couldn't teach Tillich very well because you had to translate him into a new generation who didn't understand the terms of his age and uh, my age of, uh, of seminary life. Uh, and uh, so I uh, began to turn more to the, uh, the so-called neo-Orthodox traditions, and uh, they became part of my own vocabulary. Now, what made Tillich a great lecturer? Um, I think the, uh, the way in which he clarified concepts as he went along. For introductory students, uh, uh, even though he worked at a high level of abstraction, he clarified the abstractions as he went. Great. Now, what would you say for those of us who are not familiar with Paul Tillich? Uh, could you mention one or two items or, or thoughts that he introduced to the theological world? Well, the ground of being is one uh, thought, and he didn't like the word God because the way in which the God had taken on during that period, almost a magical tone, that if you pray to God, you're going to get your wishes. I see, like a magic genie, yeah. amulet, yes. that sort of thing. And uh, he thought that was not right. And it was also the tr true that uh, God became the one who baptized uh, this nation or that nation during the world wars that he lived through. So was he reacting to the idea that America was God's own country, we can't do yes. it wrong? That so sort of he thing. appreciated the democracy, appreciated the freedom of speech, and he appreciated the human rights defense all of which were violated by the Nazis from which he had to flee. Mm -hmm. So he appreciated the country, but he thought that there were people who thought that this was not the promised land. The promised land is too low, too far, and ultimately in the future, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, and new earth. Now this is very interesting because, as you well know, a lot of especially more conservative evangelical Christians criticized Tillich for exactly that, not using the word God, but using ground of being. Uh, would you say that it's because Today, we don't quite understand the matrix and the historical uh, period in which he lived, and he was reacting against that. Yeah, and you, it's, that's true. And he also was influenced by some of the great mystical writers of the past who talked about the ground of their own existence being in God. And uh, so that's the ground of being that he had a mystical streak in him uh, from the German mystics. I see. Now, today, um, some people are critical of Gordon Kaufman uh, at Harvard as well for almost similar reasons. How would you distinguish the two? Well, he thought that uh, uh, Gordon Kaufman was a colleague of mine. My first years of teaching uh, anywhere were at Harvard, and he had just come as a young professor, uh, uh, well, middle-aged professor uh, to Harvard. And uh, he, he's what you call a radical historicist. That is to say that he thought everything was historical and that there's nothing stable. And uh, he's the uh, close to the, some of the postmodernists that we've criticized today, in which there's there's nothing stable at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, while while I think we have a responsibility to engage in some kinds of social change and some kind of psychological spir spiritual change, 
uh, I also think that there's a ground of solid uh, being that uh, is part of God's graceful support of our existence. Now, would you say that if Tillich were to be asked today whether God exists as a God described in the Bible, would he respond affirmatively? He'd probably talk about what do you mean about the God of the Bible? Uh, does this God have a personality? Uh, yes, he does have a personality. Uh, Tillich argued that uh, with the Buddhist scholar in Japan in the famously published dialogues. Everyone was surprised to see that because they thought the God of being wouldn't have a personality, wouldn't have a personhood. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, Tillich argued against that, uh, that view uh, in the face of the Buddhist challenge. I see. So within the church, he was he resisted the idea of the word God because it has it has certain historical connotations as far as he's concerned. But yes. outside the church, he would defend the concept of God. He would defend the concept of the, of personhood being sacred. I see. Great, uh, Andre. Any any follow up questions uh, for Prince Stackhouse? Well, yes, he says that this is the source of idolatry. You can take all sorts of things as their ultimate concern. And he knew some of them that uh, had been taken uh, falsely. Uh, but he also took uh, faith as a matter of ultimate concern. That's one of the ways by which he defined faith. What are you really dedicated to? What do you expect uh, to be of salvific importance uh, for your life? Uh, uh, that is what you take to be your ultimate concern. And that can be valid or it can be unvalid. Uh, and I think it's a useful concept to translate uh, one dimension of faith. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Professor Dyckhouse.